My presence at this conference is because really since uh, 2008 I've been involved in the initiative to bring pro uh, high energy proton therapy to the UK. Uh, I was involved in the initial submission to, uh, to the Department of Health, um, making the case for proton therapy, particularly for children. Although I work in Wales at the moment, uh, and I've been there for the last 10 years, uh, before that I spent 18 years as an, a clinical oncologist in Leeds, and my main special uh, area of um, practice was in the treatment of children with cancer. And uh, it was around about 20 years ago I realised there was, there was potential for uh, reducing the side effects of uh, radiotherapy in children by the use of proton therapy. So that's um, encouraged me to uh, try and be involved in making the case for proton therapy in the UK and I've continued on that basis ever since. That's right, yes, the, of course that's just 50 miles from Swansea. We don't quite know what patients will be treated yet. Uh, uh, the, there are uh, there's a number of standard indications for proton therapy. Those are uh, patients with, with uh, tumours uh, near to radiosensitive structures such as the skull base or the spinal cord, where proton therapy can enable the delivery of a, a um, an effective dose of radiotherapy without uh, causing unacceptable damage to those organs nearby. Uh, but in children, uh, the main aim is to reduce the dose of radiotherapy to the organs and areas of the body that don't need uh, to be treated with radiotherapy to try to reduce some of the long-term side effects of treating children. So uh, although, yeah, we don't know uh, quite uh, yet yeah, which patients will be treated over and above those that have standard indications. Uh, so uh, we, we are discussing with the, with the centre in Newport um, what in the indications uh, might be for the future. And I think uh, one of the uh, benefits of this meeting could be to um, facilitate and promote discussion over the the role of uh, proton therapy uh, for patients with indications that currently aren't being treated. In other words, um, uh, to what extent um, does, do the indications of proton therapy meet, need to be expanded over and above what uh, groups are treated at the moment? I, I think that um, it's important to look at cost-effectiveness the proper way Although proton therapy is currently expensive, uh, once there are more centres in the UK treating patients and the cost per patient will come down, it may still be more expensive than conventional IMRT photon radiotherapy, but it will come down. But the other thing to bring into the equation is the cost of treating long-term complications. For instance, if you can spare a child um, a lifelong need for treating some complication such as an, uh, hormone deficiency or an orthopedic problem or whatever, uh, then in the long term uh, proton therapy can become cost effective. Uh, it's important uh, to bear that in mind, so not just looking at the upfront additional costs of proton therapy, but looking at the long term uh, reduction in costs in terms of uh, avoiding the need for treating long side effects maybe over many decades.